Hey, so today I'm going to talk about how to become an acquisitions advisor and how you can make 5 to 10% of a deal from business acquisitions transactions. And even in addition to the 5 to 10%, how you can earn a retainer from buyers or sellers of businesses. Now, this video is perfect for those who dream of achieving financial location or time freedom or all of them. And maybe if you want to reach financial better lifestyle, time freedom goals, and whatnot. We will discuss finding the business. So things like how to outreach, how to then um, make sure that business owners are willing to sell to a buyer and how you can find both buyers and sellers and how you can provide world-class experience to both the buyers and sellers in the process of selling their business or in the process of helping buyers to buy a business. Now, we will go through and talk about uh, the six steps to start with on becoming a successful acquisitions advisor. We'll discuss how we are doing it right now, how we use this business model to make five to six figure paydays, plus four and sometimes five figures monthly retainers in addition to the paydays that come from the percentage. And I'll discuss why I think this is the best model to make money and get yourself outside a full-time job, even if you don't have time or money to start with, because you can put one or two hours a day, get to a point where you're getting five, 10,000 a month retainer. Then every now and then get those four, five, sometimes six figure paycheck paydays to allow you to do it full-time if you want, or continue in the one to two hours a day. Now, you will learn how it works. You'll learn what you need to get clients, basically business sellers that you can then introduce to buyers. And I'll discuss the action plan. So let's start with why this business model in the first place. The beauty about this business model is that it can get you to 10,000 a month retainers very fast. That seems like the number that everyone tried to reach to when they try to quit their job. But the thing with this model, and by the way, in my first year, when I was advising on acquisitions, I've done more than a million in profit to my pocket, right? So it's very doable. And I started my personal brand and outreach efforts from scratch. The thing with this model that will make most people avoid it in the first place is because it's not as popular as drop shipping or social media agencies or real estate or trading or affiliate marketing, because this model requires real work, right? You need to talk to people. You need to actually build relationships with real business people and actually learn about financial literacy and basics of business. And this model offers a skill that can stay for a lifetime. That's the beauty here. And it will help you with any business you might want to have, unlike other business model that also always change. Like other business models always got new rules, new algorithms, new ways of doing things and whatnot. If you're an acquisitions advisor, like you can do it for a lifetime. There's no real changes. It's people been buying and selling businesses probably thousands of years ago and will continue to thousands of years ago from now, even if there's going to be AI and whatnot. At this point, we've been involving more than billion dollar worth of transactions. Some of those deals, we just took retainers. Some of those deals, we took a percentage. Some of those deals, we were partners. And that's what I like about the acquisitions advisory model. You can get a retainer. So if you sign someone for, let's say one to 10,000 this month, next month, you could earn even more, let's say 20 to 100,000 from the same client after you close on a deal with him and you earn your five to 10% of the deal. Plus, you also earn a commission on every team member you bring to your advisory firm. Like in our firm in acquisitions.com, we pay 50% reoccurring commissions on every new member that an advisor bring kind of like in his downline. And that alone can quickly get you up to 10,000 a month just for referrals, right? Just from referral cash flow. So add to that the monthly reoccurring revenue that is great and the potential five to 10% per deal. It's amazing because the 
Referral cash flow is predictable and consistent. And then you have paycheck paydays of five, multiple six figures sometimes. So let's discuss how it works. At this point, I've been running this model for years, probably six, almost seven years, just specifically this model, working with businesses on all sizes. And I want to share with you kind of like how this model evolved, right? So first you had the version 1.0, right? The old business broker model. People who wanted to become business brokers, which is old school acquisition advisor, they used to pay, still pay a lot of them high licensing fee for broker companies. In addition to the initial licensing fee, which can get to $60,000 in companies like Transworld that you can go and check, you also pay a percentage from each deal that you close to the brokerage. Now their brand is usually weak, like Transworld, it's not like a name like acquisitions.com. And they're not really using the internet or technology in general to get door to get deals. They do, they suggest you to do door knocking to get deals. And they very much work in the business. Like they show you how to work in the business and not how to build a business and work on the business because they don't know how to use leverage with online tech automations, things like that. Therefore, you got low capacity and low scalability in this model. And unfortunately, just a lot of those brokers are very much old school, right? I got nothing against them, but with my experience, that's what I've seen. What we created over the last few years is this new model, which is kind of like this modern lean model, the 2.0 version, which is an acquisitions advisory that allow you, for example, in our acquisitions.com, you just pay yearly licensing to receive immediate authority, immediate training, immediate brand recognition in the market but you're not paying percentage of each of your deals. So instead of paying 60,000 upfront plus 3% of your commission on every deal, you only pay a few thousand a year versus transfer that you just need to put 60,000 upfront. So that keeps things simple and scalable and allowing advisors to invest their hard earned savings into growing their business, which actually you don't really have expenses here if you don't want. You can literally put one to two hours a day put time, not necessarily money, and get amazing results. And when you earn money, when you bring in revenues, you can reinvest that money back into the business for more systems, more automations, and more team members. And what I like about this model is that you don't need a big team or office. You can work from anywhere. You can focus on getting clients, basically business owners, which eventually grows your business, right? You get business owners that are looking to sell, and then you find buyers to buy them, and you just connect between them. So this modern 2.0 acquisitions advisors are smart, they understand business, they understand financial literacy, and they are positioned as an expert in their field. Unlike many old school business brokers who don't know much about business, and they basically just spray and pray to support the process of buying and selling businesses. So moving forward, let's talk about how you get clients, how you get business owners to work with you. So to get clients, you need to first find motivated business owners looking to sell. And ideally you choose a niche eventually based on your knowledge or passion. It's not a must, but it's just going to be more fun for you to be involved in something, you know, understand or have passion or at least curiosity about. Initially, it's totally okay to be sector agnostic just to build a momentum, but eventually the more knowledgeable you are in a sector, the more people will look at you as an expert because it's like, Think about it. If you have tooth pain, would you go to a dentist or just to a general generic doctor? You'd go to the dentist, right? Why? Because he's specialized in this one thing. Same goes for business. If you can show eventually that you're specialized in this one sector, people will be willing to pay you more and it's going to be easier for you to scale because it's going to be the same repeatable model that you can choose and use again and again and again in more deals just with different companies, but in the same sector. So after we have the sector in mind, we need to go out there and do outreach and prospecting. Outreach is the most important action you'll do as an acquisition advisor. Initially, you'll probably spend 80% of the time that you're gonna put again, if you have a full-time job or another business, you can start with one to two hours a day and you could probably, like I said, put 80% of your time finding new businesses, new clients. You could use things like cold emails, cold calling, uh, LinkedIn or other methods. 
The key in the end of the day here is to have a high quality list of potential clients. After you get that, uh, I'll suggest with you a simple script or a simple process when you talk to the business owners to start with just saying hi and building some rapport and asking questions. Then maybe sharing common connections and commonalities. Uh, then find a way to take the pressure off and show, hey, we're not in a rush to do any deal here. And then show him how you can help him by actually helping him. Maybe you have a potential buyer already that you can introduce him to. Maybe you can look at his business and provide some support. And then you invite him to work with you and sign um, with you as the advisor that will present him in the potential exit. In the meetings with those business owners, you want to diagnose them, you want to ask for their goals, you want to find their problems, and you want to find out if they're actually motivated to sell their business. You also want to explain to them how you can help. And maybe if you're asking for a retainer, offer money back guarantee if you can bring results or tell them that the retainer will get back to them from the percentages that you'll make. So let's say if I'm asking for 5,000 a month for six months, then I'll tell them, look, this amount, the 5,000 over six months, the 30,000, I'll get it back to you from my five to 10%. So let's say I sell a business for 10 million, I get a million, you'll get, basically I'll get 30,000 less at closing. So you're not really paying for the 30,000, it's just a way for you to have some skin in the game for me to know that you're serious in selling your business. That's how you can position it in a way that basically reduce the, the pressure and showing him, look, in the end of the day, my goal here is to make the five to 10%. It's not about the retainer, it's about the five to 10%, but I need to know that you're serious. So then you can sign an agreement with him and then it's on you to deliver the service yourself or hire contractors or employees. Um, this way, if you hire people, other people, let's say on percentage only as well, you have no risk other than um, basically finding the right person or your time if you're doing it yourself and then your goal is to find a buyer right now this is kind of the 30,000 overview in a nutshell and for you to be successful in this i think you really need to understand that it's not just about the skill obviously there's a lot of nuances involved in this and i'll go into those things more and more as we go through the video but you need to understand the emotional cycle that you'll go through getting yourself into something new like this and in general, I think in business, understanding the emotional cycle of change is crucial for success in whatever you're going to do. So I want to do a deep dive, a deeper look, basically take a deeper look on the, the process you're going to go through starting something like this from scratch. And it's starting with what we call um, uninformed optimism. Uninformed optimism is basically the initial excitement when you're starting something new. You're pumped, you're full of energy because you know everything seems possible. You saw someone like you've seen maybe me or us being involved in almost a billion dollar worth of deal, and you're like, man, it's easy. I just need to connect buyers to sellers. Right? But you don't know yet the challenges ahead. So your enthusiasm is super high. And at this stage, you might be like, you know what, this is gonna be great, I can do it easily, let's go. Let's run. I believe in Moran, I believe in acquisitions.com, let's go for it. After you get started with something new, you're gonna find what we call informed pessimism. And it's gonna happen with everything new you're gonna do. Because as you delve deeper, you'll start to see the difficulties, like in everything. Like you, you, you wanna get in shape, it's simple. You need to eat well and work out, but it's difficult to stay consistent. That's one of the challenges, right? And here, you realize that there's a lot more to learn and do than you initially thought. So there are doubts, there's doubts begin to creep in and your optimism start to disappear, right? You might start thinking, hey, this is harder than I expected. Can I really do it? Which lead us to the third step in this cycle, which is the valley of despair. This is the, the toughest stage in everything you were doing. Uh, you're gonna feel overwhelmed. You may think of giving up. Everything seems to be going wrong and you're gonna question your decision to start in the first place. So it's super common to feel like, why did I even try this in the first place? I should just quit. And you're gonna blame everyone, you're gonna blame me, you're gonna blame yourself, you're gonna blame your surrounding. And you need to understand it's part of the process. Like you gotta be okay with that. And only if you're gonna stick to this part, which again, all of us are gonna go through in everything new we're gonna try, 
If we're gonna stick to it, we can move to the fourth step, which is informed optimism. If you push through the valley of despair, you start to see progress. If you're not giving up, if you're taking action every day, if you're following the habits, you're gonna gain more understanding and confidence and you'll see small successes begin to appear. Your outlook improve on things. You think, hey, I'm starting to get the hang of this. I can see how this will work. Maybe you signed the first business owner looking to work with you. Maybe you found the first buyers looking to buy businesses. Maybe you even done your first deal. You're like, man, this can work. I can make tons of money from this. Maybe you refer the first advisor to your network. And that was able to bring you some few thousand a year in recurring revenue or just referring someone. And those things, if you get here, you can get to the fifth step, which is success and fulfillment. And this is basically where you finally reach a point where your efforts pay off. You learn the tone in the process, you overcame obstacles and you achieved your goals. And when you get there, and hopefully you had those things in life. And if not, I'm telling you, you'll feel a deep sense of satisfaction and pride. And at this stage, you'll think I did it. It was worth it all along. All the effort was worth it. And I can tell you that most people fail because they give up in the valley of despair. But if you have the right mindset, if you can push through it, you can reach success. But to navigate that valley of despair, let me give you some actionable mindset to adopt, right? So the first step is first of all, to understand that you cannot, you cannot skip stages. Like you need to accept that you must go through all the stages and understand that there are no shortcuts to success. Every stage, including the tough ones, they are essential for growth and learning. So remember, first of all, suffering is part of the journey. You can skip it. Learn to enjoy it and understand it's the staircase to your growth. Second thing to understand is that, and, and probably a tip is to learn to confront your true self, right? So it's very good to constantly reflect on your beliefs and limitations and always ask yourself like, is this my true belief or a limiting belief? Because understanding the root of your doubts and fears can really help you overcome them. If it's journaling daily about your thoughts and feelings, which can provide insights into your mindset and reactions, or if it's doing some therapy and finding your true deep beliefs and understand, am I really believing it? Or is it like a, a force, the, the opponent, the resistant, the Satan, whatever you want to call it, that is here fighting me? And usually you find out that you decide which one you want to give attention to. And you can give attention to both. You can give attention to the emotional, reactive part of you that is scared. Or you can give attention to the part of you that is certain, that believes in himself, that got no doubt and know that you're already successful as a human being. Third tip is look after yourself. If it's exercise, sleeping well, eating well, your physical health will impact your mental health. So regular exercise, proper sleep, healthy diet, it's crucial. Because when your body is well and taken care of, you're better equipped to handle stress and challenges. Sticking to those daily habits, things like meditations, working out, those are the things that are allowing me at least to keep myself consistent working towards my goals no matter what I go through. Fourth tip is seek solitude and connect with like-minded people. So find a way to spend time first of all alone with yourself to reflect and grow but also connect with others who are on the same journey and try to avoid those who don't understand or support your goals. Instead, find a community that lifts you up, that encourages your growth. It's crucial to your success. For me, every day right now, if I'm not meditating, I feel like something is missing. I gotta meditate to find balance and certainty and clarity. The fifth step is to understand that working on something doesn't entitle you to success. Please understand that effort alone doesn't guarantee success. Results take time and everyone's journey is different. So be patient and persistent at the same time and constantly ask yourself like am i doing my best every single day and every day that you go to sleep or every day that you wake up ask myself ask yourself like is there anything that i've done yesterday that i regret 
And if there's something like that, that you feel like you regret you've done, just remove it, try to remove it completely. That's the best self-development program you can ever have. Sixth step is find a way to adopt a scientist mindset. Basically find a way to test new approaches and new things. Approach problems like a scientist. Always be testing and experimenting new methods. Keep track of what works, but then also on what doesn't. And always be willing to adjust your approach and change things based on what you're finding. Because even if I'll give you everything that I've done and I'm, I am to our advisory firm, or given everything, scripts and templates and recorded calls and everything, but you'll still need to adjust it to reflect you. Because in the end of the day, you're selling yourself. I cannot come and sell you. You need to sell you based on yourself, your experience, your knowledge, your understanding, your passion. And even that adjustment can take time sometimes. So you need to constantly approach things as let me find something, let me see if it works or not, and let me adjust based on that. And let me have a second set of eyes to tell me what I'm doing right or wrong. That's why having this network of people to look after you is crucial. Seventh step is realize that no one is coming to save you. Success is your responsibility. No one is, no one will care about you like you. No one, even not your mom. So don't wait for someone to rescue you or make things easier for you. It's not going to happen. And if it will, look at it as grace and say thank you. But don't expect those things. In the end of the day, your output is only as good as your input. So find way, put in the work consistently and take full ownership of your journey and results. Number eight is see the value of despair as a rite of passage. Embrace this value of despair as a necessary step. In the end of the day, it's a period of growth and transformation. Just like a rite of passage, it's challenging, but it's essential for becoming your best self. So view it as a badge of honor that you're moving towards success, going through this period that most people will give up during it. If you're not going to give up, you're going to make it. And unfortunately, so many people, they get to that step and then they give up and then they go and try 10 other business models instead of just sticking to this one thing. And I'm telling you, in this advisory model, you can make great retainers, great recurring revenue, plus multiple five and six figure paydays. And that's just the beginning, because for me, that was my baseline to then do deals, partnership, investments, roll ups, acquisitions, exits all through this network that I've built as an advisor. Number nine is understand that this experience is cyclical. If you're going to stay in business for the rest of your life, you will go through these stages repeatedly with new ventures, new challenges, new businesses you're going to go through, new deals you're going to work on. Each time you start something new, you'll experience this cycle if you want it or not. But you'll see that with experience, you'll navigate these stages more quickly and more effectively. And like I said, remember, most people just quit halfway, but you're not like most people, especially if you're still watching it. You have the resilience to see it through. You got to believe in yourself. So my question to you is, will it be something you stick to for once or not? I already showed that it's possible to make it work. I've made millions of dollars being an acquisitions advisor. And I'm opening up right now our firm and allowing access to assets and tools that I've never had when I started. I didn't have the domain acquisitions.com when I started. And now when I reach out to people with the acquisitions.com domain, people immediately take me serious. And you can have that as well. So embrace the journey, push through the hard times and achieve your financial dreams going through it. Next, I want to share with you the map that helped me make a million dollar, more than a million profit in my first year as an advisor, more than three million profit in my second year, just from the retainers. And it just continued to grow from there. I'm going to give you access to the same map. Um, in fact, I'm going to go through four different things. First of all, I'll start with the four stage map to hit at least 10,000 a month with your acquisitions advisory business. Second thing is I'm going to show you exactly what to do in your first 100 days of starting your advisory business, broken down uh, by steps. And at the end of this, I'll also give you information on how to join our advisory firm. 
And lastly, I'm going to give you the opportunity to join um, our advisory firm at a huge discount and get some um, one-time bonuses for doing it. So if that interests you, make sure you watch this until the end. So let's continue. Here's the map to get to a point where you're bringing in at least 10,000 a month in retainers, right? If not 100,000 a month when closing deals, like I said, from the paydays of the five to 10%. So my goal for you is to get to 10,000 a month in retainers as soon as possible, and then get those 20, 30, 50, 100,000 days when deals are being closed, right? So to get to those numbers, I think it's very good to experience it and look at it very similar to finishing a video game. Let me explain. A video game usually has two main elements, a set of missions to complete and a map that tells you where to go. Right? The process of finishing a video game is straightforward. It may not be easy, but it is straightforward. You look at the map, you see where it's telling you to go and you go there. Then you complete the missions and you repeat this process until you finish all the missions. With business, the process is very similar. You have to go through a set of tasks and as you complete them, your business grows. The hard part in business is that we're not given a map or clear tasks when we start. And this means that we have to figure it all out on our own. Most people fail because without a map, they don't know where to go next. So what if you had a map in business? How much easier would it be to succeed if you knew exactly what to do next and the best way to do it. Kind of like having a map makes your decision effortless, right? You see the path to your next milestone and that's a huge thing because fear of making the wrong decisions stop most people from succeeding. What a map does is it take away that fear. With a map, the path is clear. Your only job then is to walk the path. That's exactly what I'm gonna give you right now. Because after being involved in multiple businesses at the multiple seven and eight figure a year, I can confidently say that I've crafted the perfect map to get you from zero to 10,000 a month with this process and then have those paydays of 20, 30, 50, 100,000 days from the five to 10% of each deal. And I know you're here still watching this because you want to start an acquisitions advisory business, but you just maybe don't have clarity. You don't have the map to get you there. So now we're changing it, right? So let, let me present to you this map to seven figures with this business model. There are four stages to it. So let me break down each of them and let me go through what you're going to experience at each stage. I'll also give you a range of how much you're going to make at each range and the specific characteristics of that stage. And also the missions you have to accomplish to accomplish and complete, and then how to progress to the next stage, right? So let's start with stage number one, which is being called a junior advisor. This is where you're getting started and you're starting to make between 1,000 to 5,000 a month with your acquisition advisory business. To get to this stage, you mainly have to work on prospecting and finding business owners, basically clients to work with. It's called the junior advisor stage because most of the time you're doing everything on your own from negotiation to supporting clients, you're working on selling basically your client's business as if it was your business, as if you were a contractor, you're working in the business, you're doing everything. Now, even though this is the first stage, it's one of the steepest parts of your journey because signing the first client will always be the hardest. And here in this stage, you're experimenting with different niches, different business owners, different opportunities, different buyers, and you're finding out what works best for you. So your mission here in this step is just to find proof of concept deal. Get your first deal done as soon as possible, no matter what. That's why I'm not forcing our advisors to focus on one niche to start with, because any deal to start with, even if they're barely making money, is worth it. Because that will get you out of the valley of despair into optimism and results very, very fast which will help you move to stage number two, which is having this boutique advisory firm. This is where you're making anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 a month on retainers. And you get to this stage, once you dial your niche, you start specializing maybe, and you become good at getting consistent results and buyers for your clients in that specific niche. 
People start to see you as an expert in the niche. You have credibility. You start to have case studies of the deals that you've done. And you'll already have perhaps an assistant working with you, either on a per client basis. Maybe you give him a percentage of your deal or maybe in a full time with you. And this way, having someone working with you can get off a lot of the admin work from you and focus on signing more deals. So your mission here is to complete the transition from self-employed, almost like a contractor, to a proper business owner or runs a real advisory firm, which will move you to stage number three, which is becoming an established advisory firm. This is where you're making anywhere from 10,000 to 30,000 a month. Here, you really start to get dialed in. You've got your outreach on point, you get some appointments, client meetings dialed in for you, and perhaps maybe you even got some ads running to generate more leads of business owners and buyers on autopilot. Maybe you have a full-time member or maybe even two or three people working full-time for you. And the growth you experience from a junior advisor to boutique advisory firm looks linear, but once you get to this point, you start to experience exponential growth. And your main mission here is to scale your advisory firm to a point where you can use it as a launchpad to fund other business ventures or investments of yours. What you can do then is progress to the next stage, right? Once the advisory firm can run smoothly without pretty much any input from you and is generating enough cash to provide you finally a real financial freedom opportunity. And when you're here, then you can become what we call stage four, which is becoming an equity partner if you want. This is where you start making anywhere from 30,000 upwards to 250,000 or more per month. And at this point, you're not only working with clients and acting as a full service advisor firm, but maybe you're also taking percentages yourself in the buyer's side in different roll ups. Maybe you're just taking more percentages in doing those deals because now you're an expert. This is how you make serious money in this business. The more well-known you get, the better opportunities will be presented to you. For example, I'm at a point where I'm so well-known for my advisory expertise as an acquisition advisor that I get offered to do deals with many companies all the time just because of my business expertise and personal brand. So hopefully this gives you map to get to 10,000 a month with your acquisition advisory business as soon as possible, and even far more than that. The path is laid out in front of you and it's been proven to work. All you have to do now is act on it and just do the work. You have all the resources and knowledge you need to succeed even right now to get started. You can go out there, you can take action. The only thing sitting between your current self and your future self is the work that needs to be done and the map I've just given you. Now, during this video, I've given you so far the map to success. You can now take that map and try to walk the path on your own. But remember that the map is only useful when you have a plan that goes along with it. A plan on how to go from point A, where you are right now, to point B, which is the final destination. So right now you have two options, right? Number one is you try to figure out everything on your own with this plan that I gave, knowing that the devil is in the details. Step number two is get an in-depth, step-by-step proven plan to go from zero to 10,000 a month with your acquisitions advisory business inside our advisory training for our acquisition.com advisor. This option is the smart choice if you want to cut your learning curve by years, because inside our advisory training, you'll get everything from the foundations, to the mindset, to the outreach, to the negotiations, to the legal, to the finance, to the systems, to the processes, to the inbound and personal brand. This is the core curriculum that will guide you to success and you can get more details on it below. So thanks for watching this video. I appreciate you very much and love you. And I hope to see you being successful as an advisor with us or anyone else. I appreciate you. Bye bye.